All right, all right, you can stop asking about it. I do, despite what you may believe, make videos sometimes based on request, and because this was so heavily requested, sure, I will talk about it. But I just want the record to show I was not very interested in this topic. The Growing Up ad by Samsung. It came out about a week ago, and it's raked up over 15 million views, so it's very popular. People are all getting pumped about it. Ooh, roasted! Apple been roasted by Samsung! And that's all really this is good for. It's not a convincing kind of ad. I think that when you're debating between Galaxy phones and iPhones, which are both very, very good, there has to be a more in-depth discussion than just showing 60 seconds of footage. So the ad is definitely not converting anyone. I don't think anyone watches this and changes their mind. All it really does is upset the competition. So the Apple Sheep Army, they all get upset about it. I do not because Samsung has done this so many times in the past. It doesn't change the existence of the Apple ecosystem. I don't watch this ad and go, oh yeah, I guess I have to put up with that. I watch it and go, well, that that's dumb. It's not going to make me switch or anything. So for the sake of comforting my Apple sheep, because I know a lot of you are watching my videos, I will unnecessarily critique the ad and bring up the problems that I see in the ad. But again, this really shouldn't matter. As you guys know, I am not a hater of Galaxy phones. I've used the Galaxy S8 and I think the Note 8 takes amazing pictures and it's a great design. And Samsung works with Apple a lot to make iPhones possible. So don't consider this a Samsung hate video. Just consider it a, guys, these type of ads are just stupid. They don't get anything done and all they really do is in encourage people to go, oh my drop, Samsung's so much better, oh my god. It's not meant to be actually thought provoking because the more you think about this ad, the less it actually makes sense. So here we go. So of course the ad is called Growing Up and it starts in 2007 with this guy who's looking at the Apple store lineup. People are outside of the store. They're lining up for the iPhone, the first one, and he gets it and he's happy about it in June of 2007. And it just kind of shows him unboxing it. He looks happy. There's no real Samsung follow-up on that one. Keep in mind that the Galaxy S series, and this is a video from Samsung Galaxy, was not around until 2010. So I'm confused as to why the ad wanted to bring up the fact that the original iPhone came out three years before Samsung's own competitor. So I, I don't know why they needed to include that. You could have just started it with the 2010 bit. But again, this is what Samsung roast ads are supposed to do. You take the best examples of your phone and compare it to the worst possible examples of the competitor, which means that it's not really very fair. It of course is bias. I am biased too, but at the same time, I'm not trying to sell you a phone I made, so it's a little bit different. So we then cut to 2010, and he's trying to take a picture of luggage he has in the back of his van, and very quickly it says, cannot take photo, you are out of storage. So if we go back and look in 2010, that was the year the iPhone 4 was released. And the iPhone 4 came in three different storage options, 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, and 32 gigabytes. Now again, the 2010 was right when the Galaxy S series was first introduced. Their phone had a storage configuration of 16 gigabytes. So not quite as high as Apple's was at the time. And it's definitely a critique I have of this ad already is that yes, phones had a lot less storage back then. And yes, everyone ran into the your storage is full problem, but that wasn't just Apple. That was just smartphones in general. Yes, the Galaxy S series allowed you to expand the storage with micro SD. So there was that option of getting more storage, but at the same time, Apple also provided a 32 gigabyte model. So with Apple, you also had that option. So I don't understand how this is a big dock towards Apple. Like, oh man, Galaxy's always had more storage. Even if we look at the market now, this standard S8 and Note 8 come in at 64 gigabytes. And then if you want more storage than that, you're gonna have to buy a micro SD card. Whereas Apple, you can out of the box, no extra purchases necessary. You can just get 256 gigabytes, which is very hard to fill up. A lot of people are like, you don't need that much. Exactly, that's the point. The end goal is that you never have to have this pop-up that says your storage is full. If you have 256, that will definitely, in the prolonged use you'll have this phone, never happen. So we, we progress. In 2013, it cuts forward to him getting the iPhone 5S, which we then compared to the Galaxy Note series, where to show off the Galaxy Note's amazing potential with its stylus and everything, they show a gal adding a guy's name and number via a note, literally like in, a, in, a, in the Scribble app, whereas the guy using the iPhone, in my opinion, is just being a tad more logical. He just has a freaking keypad. He's just creating a new contact. That way he can, you know, tell Siri to call this person or do whatever. Whereas the Galaxy Note, it, it appears must be, I don't know, was that a feature? The, the idea that you could start a note, add a name to that note, and write a number beneath it, does it automatically create a contact for that? It seems like that would take a little bit longer to me. I can definitely type faster than I can write with an S Pen. And I certainly know a lot of people with Galaxy Note phones, they never did that when you were creating a new contact. You just hit create new contact and you punch it in the numbers. That's faster. I don't know what the advantage here is supposed to be. The fact that styluses exist and that you can draw on the note, 
surprise, that's great. You can have styluses on iPhones as well. It's just they're, they're not built in. I, get, I, I, don't, I don't see the big significance here. It's like, oh man, I really missed out having that stylus so that I could write a name and number. That's something I can't do on my iPhone. Well, I can just type it and punch it in, whatever. So again, I find this little bit about the Galaxy Note being miles ahead kind of insignificant. So anyway, that's 2013, we move on. And now we cut to 2015 when he's waiting in line in a raincoat. And of course, everyone in the line looks extremely miserable right because that's that's what the Apple lines looked like in 2015 everyone lining up for the iPhone and just looking miserable typically not what happens if you see people on launch day they get really pumped and excited but of course Samsung's just trying to convince you that if you're an Apple user you are in fact miserable so that's 2015 and then it cuts immediately to 2016 wait we didn't even talk about the phones in the little 2015 bit they didn't even show the iPhone that came out or the note that was available they literally just showed the guy waiting in line like that was the only significant thing of the entire year Okay, boom, roasted. You you had to wait in line, and for some people, it may have been raining on that day. Boom, Apple users have to deal with bad weather. Suck it, Apple. Great, great point. Yeah. The difference is lots of people like iPhones, so they have to wait in line for them, since not that many people like Galaxy phones. Yeah, I guess you don't have a line because they're not as popular. So congratulations. You have a much smaller amount of demand, Samsung. Congrats. So anyway, we cut to 2016, and then we've got this little bit where he sneaks up to this girl and surprises her, and they fall in the lake together off of this little podium thing. She taking a picture with her note phone, and he has his 5S on him. And I just have to mention, you know, apart from tech at all, I don't know if they're dating or if they're engaged or if they just have a crush on each other. No matter what, if I scared my girlfriend and ended up pushing her into a lake or a pond or something, she, she wouldn't be too cool about that. Whether it's your fiance, your girlfriend or whatever, that, that they would be rather upset about that. And in the ad, she seems to be very like, <laughs> that's, that's fine, oh, you tease me. No, instead they'd be like, oh my God, I'm going to be soaking wet all day. Why did you do that? You ruined my hair and makeup. But anyway, getting back to the tech, that's unrelated. They show off that the Galaxy series was water resistant back then and the iPhone was not. And that is a true fact. He's dropping his phone in the rice. But I do have to say, in the particular scenario they use, I feel like that when you fall into a big lake like that, especially unexpectedly, and you fall in with your phones, the more common scenario would have been both of the phones dropping to the bottom of the lake and you having a very hard time to find them because neither the Galaxy or the iPhone floats. They definitely don't float. They would have sunk to the bottom and both parties would have had a very hard time finding their phones again. I think there was a better example you could have used Samsung, like using it in a pool. In a pool, you don't have to worry about the phone sinking incredibly deep. But yeah, credit where credit is due. Samsung did have water resistance first. This is true. I just don't think that this particular scenario was common enough to get people to switch over. And I think it's kind of an irrelevant argument now because both iPhones and Galaxy phones have great water resistance. They're held under different standards, which a lot of people don't realize. And it's kind of confusing. IP67 and IP68 when it comes to smartphones are almost identical. It's like you can hold the Galaxy half a meter deeper than the iPhone for 30 minutes. They're both very water resistant now. So trying to bring up this argument at this point is like, yeah, okay, you had water resistance first, congratulations. But I mean, Apple had the dual camera first. Do we want to bring that up too? You both have it now, but again, one of you got it first and you even brought it up in this ad. Apple had a smartphone, a popular one in 2007, three years before you introduced the Galaxy S series. Again, so Apple was first there. What does that have to do with right now? I don't know. So that was the 2016 year and he is obviously very upset. Then we cut to 2017 and he's showing himself using the lightning dongle because the headphone jack was removed and of course because it is a Samsung focused ad and this is something I don't really blame them for but you just have to take note that this is very biased they're showing the galaxy phone in its greatest conditions compared to the iPhone in its worst condition which means that you know he's using this crazy dongle that allows him to plug in the lightning cable and use his wired headphones at the same time I have never once in my life ever done that with any iOS device again if we were trying to treat this from a more fair example we'd be showing the Galaxy in all of its capabilities versus the iPhone in all of its capabilities. So of course, that's why they show the guy using the cheapest looking iPhone. They give him the basic silver one, the one that's not the plus model, so of course looks smaller. And he's not using AirPods, which Apple also unveiled alongside the iPhone 7. And I think that was the true intention. That's what they really wanted you to use. Plus the battery life was heavily, heavily improved with the iPhone 7, but of course you won't see that recognized here. They have to show off that his phone is much more inferior, even though it got an improved battery life from 
from the previous generation and the water resistance which they're not going to bring up again and then of course they cut to the galaxy phone that has this beautiful wireless charging pad behind it but of course that's not included but then of course airpods are not included with the iphone 7 either so they're not going to show that with the iphone right so i can't really describe the relationship here it seems like the gal seems to have a ton of money so she can spend all of her stuff on the fanciest looking galaxy phone whereas the other guy can't buy airpods can't buy the plus model so that's why he's using these dongles and old cables is because he's on a cheaper budget but that of course doesn't make sense in the video later so they show off the wireless charging feature and yes samsung has been a great pioneer with wireless charging and they did do it long before the iphone did you're right you credit where credit is due you got us there but also keep in mind samsung was not the first phone to have wireless charging in fact there was a nokia phone you can actually look that up it didn't sell very well at all the reception of it was terrible but the first phone to ever get wireless charging chi wireless charging was made by nokia this is true but you don't see them bragging about it okay so we're still on the 2017 year for the phone and she looks at him and says look at how inferior your tech is why don't you spend more money on your tech even though that that s8 or note 8 that she had on the wireless charger plus the price of that wireless charger costs way more than the setup he's using so i'm just assuming in this example the guy doesn't have that much money but then of course we cut to a different angle and he immediately buys the samsung phone he just shuts off his iphone puts it in a drawer and then we see him setting up the galaxy note 8 and finally experiencing that stylus so that he can text people by writing on them something ios also has since ios 11 or 10 it's been a while the idea that you could write messages and then they would appear on another person's phone that's what the apple watch did then they brought it to the iphone so yes he's got a note phone with a stylus congratulations but again that's a 930 dollar phone and if he wants to do the wireless charging thing that his girlfriend was doing got to spend another 60 bucks on that so it's like why do you spend the bare minimum on all your apple products and then complain about them but then when you switch to the competition you're okay with spending a grand because that's like combined how much the note 8 is going to cost for you especially if you want those more storage options because they made that apparent at the beginning of the ad iphones run out of storage but galaxy note 8 only comes with 64 there's no upper tier you have to buy your own micro sd expansion which also means that deep storage on that phone will not be as fast and of course you have to take apart the phone to install it and all that whereas apple just builds it all in so of course he gets to draw on the note 8 and he looks like he's really enjoying it and then of course we get to the biggest roast of the episode where he walks by the apple store and sees people in line you know people who are excited to buy a product and we have samsung mocking the notch of course by showing this guy with a haircut that looks exactly like the notch that absolutely no one has and this is when it starts getting a little bit silly if you start making up fans of a different brand and then start making fun of that imaginary fan then yeah it's easy to make the competition look stupid i was at the iphone 10 launch day i did not see anyone with that haircut but again that that is just ridiculous so of course it's easy to make fun of it you can do that towards any phone too imagine if to make fun of the galaxy note phones i just started putting styluses on everything like now you can buy a laptop with a stylus now you can buy an apple watch with a stylus now you can buy a car with a stylus now samsung will inject a hole into your arm and a stylus can pull out that's not real that's ridiculous but if i exaggerate a feature that they have and then i make fun of that imaginary feature of course it looks stupid so it's kind of a weak argument like again this is just making fun of apple users it's not convincing anyone as hopefully you guys saw in yesterday's video i absolutely love the notch and i actually kind of prefer it but again i understand some people don't like it at all but again there's easier ways to make fun of the notch you can say it's intruding on your content to just kind of make a guy with a stupid haircut like that it's kind of the equivalent of me just talking in a dumb voice and saying i like android galaxy note phones are great that didn't convince you that it was wrong just because i said it in a stupid way and that's essentially what they're doing here there's no clever debate there's no facts brought up and of course this guy happens to be using the cheapest iphone too not the plus model samsung was very clear about making sure that no iphones in this ad featured a dual camera because they were kind of late in the show with that so then we see him walking away and he's like i don't need that anymore upgrade to a galaxy brought to you by samsung so again this doesn't change my mind at all i hope that if there were apple sheep out there who are insecure about this ad for some reason don't worry about it this is not the last time samsung's gonna do this it doesn't change anything it's basically just pointing at someone and shouting you're bad that that's the extent of conversation here so i didn't care about this ad but because so many people asked for it there's my reaction thank you guys for watching i hope you have an excellent day this is your apple sheep here and i will see you in the next one